Hello and welcome back to the series on uh, topic modeling and text classification in Python for the digital humanities or just anyone in general. In this video, we're going to be covering the key library that we're going to be using to perform TFIDF or term frequency inverse document frequency. And that library is a powerful Python library known as scikit-learn or the scipy toolkit. In this video, I'm going to cover what scikit-learn is. Uh, why it's useful, especially for this video series, and the most importantly, I'm going to address some of the problems that you may encounter while installing it, including the problem with some of its dependencies, such as NumPy. So let's jump right in. What is Scikit-Learn? Scikit-Learn is a powerful Python library for machine learning. Its full name is the SciPy Toolkit, and it came out of Google many years back, uh, a Google summer coding camp. It's very well maintained to this day. Um, it's really especially useful for machine learning because it allows you to easily kind of process and uh, manipulate data and also incorporate machine learning algorithms into your workflow. It's got a nice way of producing visualizations and it has a nice way of structuring your data and performing various tasks such as classification, regression, and clustering. If you don't know what all of these are, I'm not going to cover all of these in this video. I'm going to just give you the essentials of uh, uh, scikit-learn for performing TF-IDF and analyzing that data of topics. And we're going to be seeing specifically different clustering methods in the next couple videos. So that's what scikit-learn is. It's a very py powerful Python library. So why should you care about it? Because of all of these things right here, these useful algorithms, writing out algorithms by hand would be tedious and time consuming, especially for the cumbersome ones used by machine learning and clustering. What Scikit-Learn allows for you to do is easily in just a few lines of code implement really complex uh, tasks. So it's a very good library for actually performing machine learning on a basic level. There are better libraries out there for doing more robust and custom machine learning that, and deep learning that we'll encounter in later videos such as Teros, uh, Keras and TensorFlow. But really what we're going to be using it for is for the algorithms, the data loading, the data pre-processing, and the data manipulation. And I spent a good deal of time being kind of scared of scikit-learn. I'm not afraid to admit it, but I promise you, if you get over that fear, scikit-learn has a lot to offer. And if you spend a little bit of time with it, you're going to find that it is a very, very useful and powerful library to get to know. So let's jump down to the core of this video, how to actually install it. Like all other Python libraries, you should probably go and read the documentation. And if you do, you'll find on this page, which is the installation page on scikit-learn.org, and there'll be a link in the description down below, you'll find how to install it on various operating systems from Mac, Windows, and Linux. And if you want to do a pip or a conda install, and all you simply have to do is copy this over and drop it into command prompt or whatever terminal you might have. So you install it like a regular library. So why am I spending so much time on installation? It comes down to this problem right here, dependencies. If you're working specifically on a Windows PC, you are going to encounter possibly, at least I do consistently, a problem with installing NumPy. What is NumPy? NumPy is a base is a library in Python that is a dependency for almost all mathematical science machine learning based libraries. And the reason why it's an essential library to have and to become familiar with is because of how it stores data and memory. I don't want to go into it too much, but essentially it allows for you to store much more data, much more efficiently in memory because of the way the data is aligned. So it's a more efficient way to store data in Python. And because a lot of machine learning and text analysis and uh, um, computer vision tasks require handling a lot of numerical data, uh, NumPy is the go-to library for doing that. So all major libraries are based on it. However, NumPy comes with a few different problems that you really need to be familiar with, chiefly how it's installed, especially on Windows. And again, I'll have a link in the description down below. Now, the problem with NumPy, and if you just let uh, Python auto install NumPy, or, or pip auto install NumPy as a dependency, and you're on a Windows PC, you're going to find that you've got two problems. Problem number one, you're going to need to have and install Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable for Visual Studio 2015, 17, and 19. And I'll provide this link in the description down below. Essentially, you go down and you follow these 
uh, uh, these steps and you just install it on whatever uh, OS you operating system you might have. The other problem that you're going to have is that the NumPy that is automatically installed, at least consistently for me, is never the right NumPy. And specifically, it doesn't have the math, I believe it's math kernel library. Somebody can correct me in, in the comments down below, but it's uh, always represented as plus MKL. So in case you don't understand what your uh, Python packages look like when you install them, this is what they look like. It's under site packages if you're on a PC under Python uh, dat, uh, slash lib slash site packages, and it looks like this. And these are all installed from a .whl file. Now, most of the time when you're using pip, these are automatically downloaded and installed for you. And that works fine. But for NumPy, you're going to have a few problems because you're not going to have automatically this plus MKL. And so what I always find the best way to do this is to actually go through and do the tedious task of manually downloading the appropriate um, the appropriate NumPy file. So if you click that link right there, and I'll go back up and show you, but essentially it was that um, uh, this install NumPy plus MKL. Notice right here that it says install it before other packages. That's important to remember. So you click it and you go here and you find the right version for you. So what are we looking for in this version? How do I know what the right version is? Well, you got to break down what this is. So what you have here is NumPy, so the library, the version, right? And then you have vanilla. Now, that's not what you want. You want to grab the plus MKL, and that's going to do the plus math kernel library or whatever MKL stands for. The next thing you have here is the version of Python, and then you'll have the uh, uh, the chip that you're using, so AMD 64, Win32, on down the list. So whatever uh, whatever hardware that you're actually working with, that'll be what you install. If there's any confusion on that, please let me know in the links down below, but always check your Python version, either the standard one that you're using on your computer, or if you're using an environment, make sure that you have the correct one. I'm using Python 3.7 on this uh, for reasons I, I'm not really quite sure. So in my file, I've got NumPy version 1.18.4, so one version behind. It's on 1.19.5 right now, plus MKL, uh, Python uh, 37, and I have uh, 64 bit, uh, bit processor. So that's why I've installed that specific one. And I always like to drop it onto the C file. Once you actually have it, then it's just a simple matter of loading up your command prop in that directory, typing pip install, and then copying and pasting this entire file over into, oh, there we are, into this, and then make sure you put .whl, and you'll be able to pip install directly from the file. And that'll install it into your site packages, and you should have no problems with uh, NumPy after that. I spent so much time on this because this took me a long time when I first started out to figure out how to solve. And one of the, the trickiest things is just finding the right places to download these files. So like I said, I'll have a link in the description down below for all of that. Once installed, once installed, you'll be able to actually use the scikit-learn library going forward in this video series. We're going to be using it for two things. TF-IDF, so we're going to use the algorithm for term frequency inverse document frequency, and we're going to be using it for a k-means clustering. So an unsupervised uh, a machine learning algorithm for, uh, for kind of clustering a whole bunch of data. And that's going to allow us to assign one topic, as we'll see in the next couple of videos, to texts. And we're also going to see the limitations of that method. So that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start jumping in to actually coding with scikit-learn and Python to actually produce a TF-IDF script so that we can perform topic frequency or term frequency inverse document frequency for rudimentary topic modeling. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below.